The following is a presentation of Learfield. Welcome to Doc Insider. Our whole athletic department, there's a level of expectations of success. Throw, catch, touchdown, Oregon. He can run and slam. He's back out for a three. Left wing is good. In the air to center, back at the wall. It's out of here. I'm really excited that we get to rep our Ducks and hopefully come back to Eugene with some championships. Indoor track and field national champion. Oregon repeats as the Pac-12 champion. And for the fourth time in the last six years, the Ducks are Pac-12. Champions. We have so many teams that are excelling right now, and it's really fun to be a part of. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, here's Joey Mack. You know, I thought I was going to be really excited to have in studio guests again. <laughs> I'm quickly realizing that Zoom wasn't so bad. <laughs> Lisa Peterson, Deputy <laughs> Athletic Director, is here in studio with us. Hey, welcome back. Hey, uh, thanks, Joey. It is great, great to have you back with us. Uh, I say that jokingly. Nobody send me an email, please. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, did you thanks. have a summer? Sure, yeah. So, like, the yeah. season happened, but what we perceive as a summer vacation, did that happen? Yes. I, oh, good. I didn't answer emails for a whole week. Wow! I know. Can you believe that? No, so I actually, great. I actually think that you're you're not telling me the truth. I actually think that you probably answered emails during that week. I mean, I, I answered a lot less. How about that? Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. No, it was definitely a lot better summer than last summer. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, yeah. Well, we have a lot to tell you about. Uh, the Ducks just wrapped up practice today. Uh, we will have some interviews with Mario Cristobal for you here She's just in a little while. Uh, talk a little bit about where the Ducks are at. Getting ready for the first day in full pads, which is going to be on Thursday. And I don't know about you, but that's when I'm like, oh, it's it, like fall camp is is upon us. Like it's not the ramp up anymore. This is full on practice and getting ready, which is a lot of fun. Well, we probably have a different assessment because if you know where my office is, for uh, me, fall camp's in because I was, you know, in the music video this morning. Sure, sure. So okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. The your office is is located in a in a good spot. In a great spot. It's in a, in a good, great spot. Good spot. Yes. Uh, yes. Football team coming in ranked 12th in the coaches poll today. More details on that coming up. Uh, Lisa is also, though, in charge of a number of different things. Uh, you know, I, we used to joke that, that Lisa had the longest business card title <laughs> that I had ever seen because I think there were like four slashes in it. I tried to get those cut off, Jamie. Or Jamie. You did. I did. I did. Now it's just deputy athletic director. Perfect. Right? So yeah. I, but there's still slashes if you look at her official title. So, <laughs> But I say all that to, to just say, like, you wear a lot of hats. One of the hats that you have worn over the last 18 or so months is, at least, and forgive me if I'm wrong here, but you're kind of like the COVID guru of the athletic department. Some might use the term COVID police. That's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. Lisa, though, in all seriousness, you have been in so many of those meetings talking about protocols and, and keeping up with the latest health guidelines. And I know that's been really, really stressful. I can only imagine what that's been like to be that person, right? It's so, definitely not anything I'd ever planned for. I'll right. say that. But um, I know just enough to be dangerous now. That's a good you thing. You know, like, I, what do they say? They stayed at a Holiday Inn Express, so now they can be a doctor. Right. Like, I kind of have that feeling. Well, if it makes you feel better, one of my favorite phrases is, you have to be a jack of all trades and a master of few. I, then I've got that. There, see, there you go. That's right. <laughs> you know, but I bring all that up because, Lisa, I mean, I, you know, I think a lot of fans see, you know, like we have masks on when we're in the studio. We get a lot of questions about that. They're, we're wearing masks when there's media interviews and all these different things. And yeah. I know that this could be a charged topic, as we've discussed on the show in the past. Yes. So uh, where do we sit? What, right. what, what should fans know? What are student athletes and staff going through right now? I... I will always preface it as of today, Tuesday, what is it, August? PM, yeah. August 10th. August 10th. So as of today, um, we still have, we follow, you know, different um, guidelines. So we have, mm -hmm. obviously there's the OHA, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have Lane County Public Health. And then you have the Oregon Incident Management Team. And then we have the Pac-12, which is also tied into the NCAA. I don't know if that's the order you want to look at it, but if you go based on all of that, um, because of the requirement that campus has for everybody to be vaccinated, um, there was a threshold that was established within the Pac-12 Medical Advisory Group um, that if your team is over 85%, you can relax some of the mitigation strategies because of the high vaccination rate. So with that, when you're seeing teams, um, you know, at practice, in the weight room, in meetings, it's because 
right now our teams that are competing have all hit that threshold, which is so great. Um, so they are able to relax some of those mitigation standards. Um, the reason that you and I are sitting in a mask is because we still work for the University of Oregon. We are not on a team and we are indoors. And so as of right now, that's what our guidance says, is that we have to be in masks while we are indoors. Outdoors, it's a completely different thing. So as far as fans, as of today, August 10th, 105 p.m., um, when you go to a football game, you know, you're you're not going to need to wear a mask outside. There's not going to be vaccinated versus unvaccinated sections at this point. Um, you know, it's, it's hopefully going to feel a lot more like normal. When you go to a volleyball game, which I hope everybody is going to, you are going to have to wear a mask indoors right now. Matt Ulmer on the show tomorrow, by the way. I'd originally oh, said yesterday that he was going to be on today. They're doing actually two practices right now they with are. their early season schedule. So Coach Ulmer is going to join us on the show tomorrow. And yesterday was his birthday, so give him a hard time about that. Oh, don't worry. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, don't worry. We're prepared. <laughs> I should never doubt you. Um, Coach Ulmer, still still come to the show at 1 o'clock tomorrow, <laughs> please. I, don't, I really don't want that to come off as like, oh, no, I don't. No, we're, we're ready. The good news is he's probably really busy, and he's probably going to miss this show, so you should still be okay. I hope I hope you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for once, I hope that somebody doesn't watch the show and listen to the <laughs> show. Yeah, that's – no, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, though, talking about volleyball. But it, but, it, but it is safe to say that that's going to be a that, – that will look more like last year than, than maybe football did. Is that a safe assessment? Yes, except for now we have fans, right? right. And, um, you know, what we do on the court, like who's going to be allowed on the court is going to be a little bit different than normal, but certainly way better than last year. So we're baby stepping into it from an indoor perspective. And, and again, this is all, you know, hopeful that this variant goes away, that the vaccination rates still go up, you know, all of those things. Um, so as of right now, like it's we're actually planning for normal, which is is fun and exciting. And, you know, when you get to be around those student athletes and they actually like our volleyball team doesn't have to play in masks right. and you know, they had to do that all last season. So it's really great. I'm pretty excited about all that. So what's the – and this is an unfair question. Okay, great. I know that it's an unfair question <laughs> before I ask it. But it's one that, that, that you know, we get all the time. Okay. So I'm going to ask the source. Okay. How much more change do you anticipate? How can you ever even get your head around if there's going to be more change? And, and how much do fans need to be dialed into to what's happening on a daily basis? Well, I would love to tell you that, you know, this is it. What we're going to have is going to be what it is, but I think that all of us would be foolish to go down that path. I think we still need to keep the word pivot in our vocabulary um, and reassess and adjust. I mean, I think that there's going to be more. Um, I would love to say that it's not, but I, I don't think that we're there yet. Let's just hope that uh, the, the changes are in a positive direction then. Absolutely. You and know. I – believe that our website is is staying up to date on what is um you know oh required. i can guarantee you that it is yes yeah. so um i would just use that as your as your source of information um bring a mask just in case but as of right now like the physical distancing you know the touch points all of that sort of stuff we're being told that that's not the high risk yeah the the face coverings and, and yes. this has been you know because i I have done my best to keep track of all of it to then regurgitate what smarter people than me say. That's all I do. I, I, I am a professional regurgitator. Wow. That's my job. Can we put right? that on your job title? Like sure. Like on your business card? I'm in for that. Okay. That, that sounds a lot better. It's more, more fun. It's a conversation <laughs> starter. It's like a good friend of mine. Regurgitator. A good friend of mine, she famously puts in, in her special, like in her subheader of her resume that she's an avocado enthusiast. It's what? a conversation starter. It is a Makes, conversation like starter. If, like you, you've had to read a lot of resumes in I, your career. I mean, that, yes. that would get your attention, wouldn't it? It would. I don't like avocados, so I'm not sure that it would be in a positive direction. But well, yes, yes. So maybe you're losing out on jobs then <laughs> to, my, to my friend. I, I'm sorry I used you as an example. Um, I love avocados. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm from the Midwest. So your we, least, we what's your least favorite our... food? Like what is Tomatoes. Get, yes. <laughs> Me too. I can't do it. So for me, it's mushrooms, then tomatoes. No, I, I'm a, I can do mushrooms. You're eating a fungus. I'm sure we've eaten worse. We well, digress pretty quickly. Well, yesterday here, we, we talked about s'mores. Today we're talking about funguses. Yeah. Uh, this is Duck Insider. <laughs> So what else, What else, though, Lisa, I mean, in all seriousness, should, should fans know? I mean, like, one, one question yeah. that some fans have been asking is, like, what if I'm in a suite? What if you're in an indoor part? And, and my understanding is, even with the windows open, you're masking up right now. As of right now, what we know, yes, that's a true statement. Okay. The other question that I get the most is, will it get to a point where vaccination will be required to enter a facility? Do we, ha do we know? Do we have an answer I, on that? 
based on what I know today, that's not going to happen this season. But I, again, I, I asterisk everything. I reserve the right to give a different answer. As of Tuesday, August 10th at 1.10 p.m., yes. that is now. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa. We've just gotten uh, updated guidelines. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this email. See, but this is truly, yeah, though, how it is, right? 100% how that's it is. That's really how it is. Yep. Okay, let's actually talk about some of the seasons that are coming up. But, yes. you know, one, Lisa, just, just how exciting is it to have fans, apart from just family that we had in the spring, back in venues? I mean, can you put that into words? I, I can't. And you can already see, like, just with our student athletes, it's just so different because they know that it's, at least for them, it's going to feel a lot more normal. Like I said, they're able to be in their locker rooms. They're able to do film session together. For them to have, you know, people come in. And, Joy, we had a lot of a success last year mm -hmm. without our folks being able to see it in person. So I am so excited about that. And I realize that maybe people don't want to wear a mask, but I think that it's worth it to be able to sit in there and watch them play. So, no, they're – from everyone that I have talked to, that's one of the things that they're most excited excited about and certainly you know being able to have you know people cheering for them and seeing what they do I mean that's why we do this yeah no doubt selfishly the broadcaster sounds a lot better when it's not just you know his or her voice there's actually like people in a crowd exactly. around them that's just my version of just like how much better it is when when there's a crowd you know yes. and it's and I think that everybody needs to see that new scoreboard in Austin Stadium oh man it is something I mean um, I but, remember the game I don't I don't remember which game but I remember there was a hit you know, with the helmet, and you saw the flex fly off of the helmet on that scoreboard. And I was like, wow. I mean, I feel like I'm right there. It's well, really cool. And I will continue to, to be the, uh, the the nerd that I am. And, and not self-proclaimed nerd, truly, like a full-on dork. That is me. <laughs> you can a add, regurgitator, a you dork. Can regurgitator, like, self-proclaimed dork, like whatever you want on the you business You like avocados. Part. You don't like, like mushrooms do, and tomatoes. Guacamole is one of the four condiments that I would that I would die with. Oh, I remember that conversation. Yeah, so if you could have four condiments, for, was it four or five? Four. It was four. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that really stuck in your head. No, if I remember you could have it very four, well. If you could only have four condiments for the rest, for the rest of, your of your life, life, what would the four be? But I think that we have to argue that guacamole isn't a condiment. No, like, technically, the, de it. the Webster definition of a condiment is it's spreadable and adds flavor. Hmm. Guacamole is spreadable and adds flavor. Peanut butter. And so maybe <laughs> this is good. We, we actually, these were a gift from my grandma. Um, and we have no idea yet exactly how we're going to use our mini gavels on the show. That's but Scott, a good purpose. Scott and I yeah. both have there mini gavels. Go, so I think your guest should be able to have a gavel. I think we can probably get away with that. So, <laughs> so H.J. Cohn, Senior Associate Athletic Director for the Duck Athletic Fund, but he's also the condiment czar. That that would be his resume subhead. Yes, um, that would be. He 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 had he had the ruling, and we argued about this for months. The the, the point that I was making, I actually don't remember now. So, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> wow, this is what I, the Zoom when you're in the studio. Yeah, Zoom you know? is definitely better for something. You know. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently. It's Duck Insider presented by Point Community Credit Union. I do want to get into a few other things. A fun announcement from women's basketball today. Awesome for an individual who certainly deserves it. We're going to talk about that. Volleyball season coming up and a couple post-grad Pac-12 scholarship recipients that yes. I want to ask Lisa Peterson about. Uh, we're going to get a quick timeout. When we come back, more with Lisa Peterson from the Country Financial Studio on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Don't go anywhere. Duck Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. 
Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 food banks strong. It's time for today's STEM tip. Okay, you know recycling is important. No one wants plastic in the ocean. Here's a cool way to repurpose a plastic bottle. Build an awesome terrarium. Cut a large plastic bottle in half and fill the base with sand, pebbles, potting soil, and your favorite plant. I chose an African violet. Put the top of the bottle over your base and place it in the sun. Your plant will grow sealed in its own ecosystem. Fun, right? Learn more at She Can STEM. A message from the Ad Council. You know that someone's a veteran of the show when they have that internal clock like I do. Scott and I both, like, we pretty much know exactly where we are in the break just by, you know, like, Yeah, that was timing. impressive. Um, you put your headset on before <laughs> I did. Lisa put her headset on, like, three seconds before the last spot played. And that, that you've got the I'm internal a veteran. clock. Well, there you go. You know, so I don't know. I, I mean, maybe this is my new gig, Joey. Maybe I'm going to add this title. You can have it. <laughs> You can, be, you can do it better than I ever will, that's for sure. Lisa Peterson is our guest, Deputy Athletic Director at Stuck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. All right, so okay. let's talk a little bit about women's soccer. You know, yes, I, so love to. A, a couple things. I've said this before. Like, soccer season always is what kicks off the athletic season. You it know, is. and so yep. Friday against Corbin, seven o'clock at Pape Field. Really looking forward to seeing. Uh, you know, what's going to look more normal at Pape Field? It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm so excited for 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 another year with Coach Abel. I, I, we've talked about it. It was actually, so as we said, you know, you can get back to more normal um, this week or wait, today's Tuesday. So last week he actually, it, the first time since he's been here, had a team bonding activity yeah, with his team that? in what, how long has he been here? Almost two years, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of amazing. But no, I, so I went out to practice. Um, they did a little scrimmage last night and I went out on the, the weekend. Really excited about this team. Just, you know, the the veterans that we have back, so glad, you know, that our, our COVID fifth years or whatever we're calling them all were able to come back. Um, I like super senior. Super senior? Well, let's, okay. Well, I can do super senior. Um, but, like, Chardonnay Cran, who originally wasn't going to come back, just the leadership that they provide. I don't think you can ever underestimate what that kind of experience can do in your locker room. And I, it has nothing to do with their athletic ability, you know, any of that kind of stuff. It really is just the leadership, especially when you have a lot of young folks or a lot of new people. And so I am just I am pumped for that group i told them that it's the one team that i really feel if it had been more normal last year where we had 64 teams where they had you know more weeks in the season that we would have we would have broken that zero and made it to the ncaa tournament and so just really excited for them um you know i i trust graham and what he's doing and his communication style is one that i've never worked with before and that i truly truly enjoy in what way he um he makes difficult things seem easy because he's so upfront. And when you do that, in my opinion, with student athletes, like the student athletes, they just want to know, right? Um, they can handle the, the tough um, words. They can handle the criticism, but they just want to know. And when a coach continues to tell somebody, just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. And then nothing changes. Like you lose that trust, right? Um, but when there's actionable items that, okay, here's where I see the deficiency. Here's what you can work on to, to correct it. And then when they do those things and they see the improvement and then something changes. So they get in the game or they, they score the goal or whatever that is. Um, it's just I, – I, in my opinion, it solves a lot of heartache and um, uncomfortable conversations when, within a team if you can just be honest with the student athlete. And it's this generation. It's not just student athletes. Like, I feel like they're always asking why. You know, like, they want to know the why. Um, and they're okay with what that answer is. Just tell them and be honest about it. And I just, I truly appreciate that and have found, you know, in my role, sometimes there's some uncomfortable conversations. But if they know on the front end where they stand and what they've got to do, then it's up to them whether they choose to do that or not. That sounds like good business and good management to me. It, it is, but it, you know, it's it's difficult because not a lot of times it's those conversations that you don't want to get into, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's 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 uncomfortable. And um, for new coaches, that's that's tough to to 
find their flow and how they're going to do all of that. And he's just, just because of the, my assumption is because of the level that he's worked with, the type of, of elite, elite athlete that he has, the mentorship that he received from Joe Ellis, who is, you know, clearly one of the best to ever do it. He just has a style that works. And then it's his accent. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you say when you have that accent, right? That's I'll be sure to remind him of that. <laughs> uh, I brought it up to him a couple times. Yeah. So, so for those of that don't know, Coach Abel worked at Team USA for a number of yes. years. I mean, that you know that pretty good, impressive resume. So yeah. when you know we joke about resume subheaders, his is just Team USA, and it's exactly. like, oh yeah, champion. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Volleyball season coming up. You're yes. talking about talking about gold medalists. I mean, volleyball Team USA won the gold First medal. First time ever, Joey yeah. ever. Pretty amazing. How cool is that? Yeah. Yes, and we had one of our incoming freshmen who was a part of the USA. Well, actually, you know, you have Nunna Villar, who's mm-hmm. been in the USA um, system, and then Reagan Hope, who just came off of that as well, which is really cool in a lot of our sports. I mean, you know, Pow Pow is right now playing, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Kylie Watson, and, you know, Sedona. So I, I love that we have the ability um, to send our student athletes to do those things, and they have the access, and, and obviously they're so good to be able to do that. But I think that's just something that you can't quantify, no. you know, getting that, that opportunity. And so excited for volleyball. So we have four, four new ones, um, and just, again, watching them play without masks might be the best thing. It's going to be a completely different team from that standpoint. But if you remember, like, how young we were a couple years ago, and it was a struggle. It wasn't because the talent was bad or anything like that. It's just that leadership. Experience. And now Matt finally has, like, the older the older team versus, you know, being 80% predominantly freshmen and sophomores. So really pumped about them. Can't wait for them to get started. And they are scrimmaging on, on Saturday and – then they have an alum guy game next week, and then we get going. And I know everybody's going to be keying in on the Ohio State football game, but do not forget that we are playing Minnesota and Penn State here in September. It's a big, big volleyball weekend. weekend. I mean, Penn State, that's some, some volleyball royalty. Uh, <laughs> yes. Minnesota's pretty good. Uh, yeah. You know, Final I don't, four all the time. Yeah, I mean, and then Stanford. You know, ho-hum. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, this is going to be a fun season. We'll talk with Coach Ulmer on the show tomorrow. Lisa Peterson, we continue uh, women's basketball today. Kelly Graves announcing uh, that somebody who's yeah. one of my favorite people, uh, Jody Berry, has been promoted to associate head coach, longtime assistant with Coach Graves. Worked with Coach Graves before even coming to Oregon. That's just cool, and it's a reminder that our women's basketball program is still pretty darn good. And like I've told Kelly this, so I don't feel shy about saying it on the radio, but she's the reason of the success. Like she holds that group together. She dots every I crosses every T, but it's also just in how she does it. She's about as real as they come. Um, and you know, when you see, I, I don't want to insult her, but five, five, we, is she five, five, uh, being your post coach. Like I remember the first day that I met her and she's like, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Why are you coaching the post when you're five, five? Well, Coach Mirabal is pretty darn good at coaching exactly, offensive linemen. Exactly. So, um, but she just like she's just as real as they come, and I there isn't anyone better. I'm I'm so happy that um, she was able to be promoted and to get recognized in a way that she truly deserves. We will uh, talk a little bit more detail here from Coach Barry coming up, uh, associate head coach now for women's basketball. Yeah, Coach Barry, that's awesome. Uh, I have to ask you about this before I, I get to a couple other things. You had two post grad Pac-12 yes. scholarship recipients, Sophia Chambers, Addie Lacewell. What can you tell us? Because this is a uh, – and, and if you could, you're going to be able to explain this better than me. This is a pretty significant thing Award. to be awarded with. Yes. So it's very competitive. You know, one, thankfully, the Pac-12 um, has the the opportunity for them to get postgraduate awards. Because, you know, with everything fluctuating financially, you could see that as being something, you sure. know, that goes yeah. by the wayside. So very grateful that that program is still in existence. Um, but Sophie Chambers, like, I've just kept in touch with her since, you know, she left our, our soccer program. And she's a pretty phenomenal student athlete. Um, I don't want to misquote what she wants to get into, but it's something that's way out of my league as far as the type of master's degree that she is going to get. Biokinesiology, I believe. Believe. Which means what? I don't know. Essentially Way- sports science, but like epic sports science. So amazing, yeah. right? And so really pumped about her. And then um, Addie Lacewell, she's just, I mean, she's been steady Eddie since the day she got on this campus. Um, had, you know, connected with her right off and just really grateful that she took advantage of all of her opportunities while she was here. Um, I know that they didn't achieve exactly what they wanted to, you know, in their season. Um, 
but this is a great opportunity for her. And, you know, that's the other stuff that we talk about all the time is there are so many things that you, if you really want to get ahead in other things besides your sport, we have so many opportunities. And I don't know if you've ever had Katie Harbert on your show, but you should, you know, talk about all the stuff that we do student athlete development wise. Like, I honestly think that you have to not try to find out what happens next because of all the resources that we have. Yeah. Like it's just, there's so many things that are out there and we've talked about it a lot, Joey. It's who you know as much as it is what you know. And so making those connections, building those relationships, that's why even though we're in masks, it's great to be back in person that's so right. that we can, you know, see everyone and, and do the things that we're used to doing, but really pumped for them. Excited that again, that program program exists and hopefully that will continue as we go forward. Well, I'm not shy saying this, uh, you know, walking around the hallways was straight up creepy. For about a year because you're the only one here yeah it you was and like, scott it was were like me out. and scott and then it was like occasionally we saw a coach who came in to get something from their office or something yeah. like that but it was like I, I i honestly felt like as i walked around the hallway sometimes it was like a horror movie particularly mm-hmm. in the winter months i say that jokingly but but seriously it's it's the truth i mean yeah. like it's you know every, name me a time in society when we haven't needed human connection and like the entire history of humanity and you know right. so this is just yeah it's it's great to be back and i will say too you know to katie's credit like yes. we had her on the show and I, I could have talked to her for an hour just about different stories of like man this is somebody that really took advantage of the student athlete experience and it wasn't just you know about what happens on the field and i know that's important you know that's very of course. important yeah and we that, but it's, it doesn't have to be either or. Right. And that's the message. And, you know, it's also hard at Oregon to, in the student athletes' defense is, I mean, every one of them think that they're going to go pro in their sport. Yep. And we have that opportunity. But we also know what the statistics are. Mm-hmm. At some point, that sport's going to end. And you have to be prepared for what that is. And one of the things that, you know, Katie and I always talk about is the student athletes, they never want to hear that when they're here. Right. So then they're always calling us a year or two afterwards. And I'm like, okay, now you come back and you get the current student athletes to start listening now. Sure. So that two years from now, they're not, it, it never really works out that way. But you know, I, that doesn't mean we're going to stop the program. Pardon? I mean, are you seeing it more now though? It seems like we're, t- we're I'm telling more story. Maybe I'm just hearing them more, but it seems like I'm telling more stories about success off the field more so than maybe 10 years ago. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's just still, I mean, there's always the teams that are much more involved than others. Sure. It really is those that honestly think that they're going to go pro. And so they don't need to think about how to write a resume, how to financial plan, how to network, you know, because they're still so focused on their sport. And what I want to try to figure out is how can you stay focused on your sport yet still make this a part of what your priorities are? Yeah. That's and cool. we've got a great, like Tony Washington, mm-hmm. phenomenal in football, really happy that he's back. He gets it. He, you know, is trying to impress upon them and they have a tough schedule. Like there's no doubt about that, but he's doing what he can to help make sure okay, well, in this hour, like, let's talk about this. What are you trying to do? Let's figure out, because again, at some point, the sport ends. At some point, nobody does it forever. Maybe Tom Brady, but. One in how many billion? Exactly. Yeah. Lisa Peterson is the Deputy Athletic Director here at Oregon. Uh, Hey, thanks for taking the time. I I, I kept you three minutes longer than I said I would. It's okay. But. Well, it's a little harder to go from meeting to meeting now because it's not just right? click a link. I know. Actually, I didn't know how you know, long it was going to take me to walk down here. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it's it's different. You can't just switch meeting rooms anymore on, on Zoom. So I, I hear you. Hey, thanks for all that you do. Thank you. Um, here's two positive changes. Fingers crossed, Joey. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And, uh, well, we'll talk to you again in probably about a month or so. I look forward to it. All right. Lisa Peterson, thanks. kind enough to join us. Uh, when we come back. Mario Cristobal, he met with the media after practice today. Some good updates for you as the Ducks uh, are going to be in full pads on Thursday. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, welcome to the Spicy Drive-In. May I take your order? Can I get the spicy chicken sandwich, please? The spicy chicken is an excellent choice, sir. And to drink? Uh, whatever's fine. Oh, may I make a beverage pairing recommendation this evening? Sure. If we are feeling especially bold tonight, sir, I would recommend the Mountain Dew with that. It's bravely unrestrained with a very alive aroma that pairs wonderfully with your spicy chicken. It's followed by a hint of zesty citrus flavor. Uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you already know this, sir, but remember to appreciate the nose first by giving the Mountain Dew a little swirl to really volatize it. Uh, 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 vol- what? To change the flavor compounds and activate your taste buds to get them fully primed for that chicken sandwich. Ah, it's delicious. <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. The muscular flavor charge characteristics of Mountain Dew make for an absolutely epic mouthfeel when paired with spicy cuisine. 
It is quite on point, sir. Dude, it's a perfect match. Like they were made for each other. So true, so true. When you want to make good food bolder and bold food better, do the do. Duck Insider, Duck Insider, Duck Insider continues after this timeout on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. We're back on Nugget Cider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack here with you inside the Country Financial Studio. My thanks again to Lisa Peterson, Deputy Athletic Director, for joining us. Got to cover a lot of different things. Your Toyota Women's Sports Schedule Spotlight, it's awesome. Uh, the Ducks volleyball team is going to be scrimmaging on Saturday, and the official start to the athletic season... Friday night, 7 o'clock, Corbin is in town for an exhibition against Graham Abel's Oregon soccer team. They will be at Pape Field. You can come out. More details are on GoDucks.com. Women's Sports Schedule Spotlight, always brought to you by our friends at Toyota. Let's go places. Meanwhile, for Oregon football, Mario Cristobal met with the media after practice this morning. You know, one thing that jumped out to both myself and Rob Mosley, who were at practice today, seemed like some big plays were being made on both sides of the ball. We saw a couple long balls that were really, really nice from a couple different quarterbacks, some great catches by, well, really a couple different wide receivers. Verone McKinley had another interception at practice today. I think that's like four so far in fall camp for Verone McKinley. He's really stepped into that leadership role that I think the entire defense, particularly in the secondary, needs. Well, Mario Cristobal met with the media talking about the Ducks ramping up toward the first day in full pads on Thursday. Here's Coach Cristobal today. All right, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, wrapping up practice number four where we're in, sh- we're, we're in pads, right? But it's shells, you can't use the bottoms. Those are the rules. Emphasis on block destruction, emphasis on red zone, both high red zone, low red zone, uh, some mixed down work as well, some live, when I say live, call it play, so just calling the game and playing it like it goes. Uh, some man coverage, beating it and playing it. At the same time, some half line work as well. In the passing game, it's some seven on seven, like pure run, all right? Eliminating safeties, making sure that we're just working the basic techniques and fundamentals of block destruction and run the football. But um, good practice, physical, really, really physical. Guys are doing a good job sustaining and upholding the standards by which we practice, and we got to push them. A lot more challenges are coming for them, and we're going to make sure they get them in camp. So questions, please. Uh, how is, you, know, you have a lot of young guys and obviously some super seniors. How are they handling kind of the outside expectations? I think you're number 12 in the USA Today poll that came out today. Just You know, there, we don't have a single meeting, a uh, single piece of paper. We don't hand out a single thing that shows any type of ranking. We just, we just don't. And then we practice a certain way, and it requires every ounce of what you have. We're up early in the morning. We meet early. We go right to practice. We lift. We bring them back. We do all that stuff. So their day is gobbled up with what we do, and the entire focus is on you know, our process. And, and that one and all mentality is that next thing that you're doing. So it's that meeting. It's that next walkthrough. It's that next rep. And uh, over here, we're, you know, we stack the reps more than we stack the days. The reps will take care and become days, and that will keep on becoming weeks and whatnot. So all in all, I think that's the way we handle it. If something ever comes up, we would address it. We just have our foot on the gas and just thinking everything right in front of us. No, uh, no focus on anything else except the Oregon Ducks. Now that you're in shells and you got full contact from up here this week and next week, how do you evaluate and try to see, look for separation in that running back room from the three young guys? Well, they got to be able to do three things. They got to be able to run the ball, uh, they got to be able to catch the ball, and they got to be able to protect. Uh, they're all going to get opportunities. Those older guys have played a lot of ball, and they're probably, uh, not probably, they're definitely in the best physical condition they've ever been. They're bigger than they've ever been. They're stronger. They look more explosive. And we're putting a heavy load on them. They're both healthy going into camp. In previous years, we've had issues. They've been nicked up here and there. 
Uh, but not this year. You're full throttle. Uh, we are going ones, twos, threes, and fours. So everybody's getting the same amount of reps, and we are throwing in those young guys in some big moments. They have performed extremely well. Today they both made real big plays. What was your evaluation on Dorless last year? And so many talented young guys behind him. What's kind of his role now that you know you lose Jordan, you lose Austin? You kind of he's one of the older guys. He's a classic three technique with enough athleticism to jump outside, like he did in uh, in the Pac-12 game last year. You know, we uh, when we recruited him out of Deerfield Beach, it's an awesome program. He was a basketball player that was learning how to play football. He had played football, but he had been more the basketball guy transitioning. But you saw the athleticism, you saw the twitch, you saw the ability to move, you saw the ability to bend. Um, he's put on the right kind of weight. He's weighing about 290 pounds, okay? Um, and if you look back to the end of his freshman year when he was playing significant downs, you saw him at the two eye, you saw him at the three knocking back people. You know, in the Rose Bowl game, you saw him going against a veteran offensive line and really playing well. So then last year, you saw a guy that matured a little bit more, but not having a full off season. Um, I would say you'd like to have seen a, an entire body of work of a full season uh, with a guy like that because at the end of the day, this is only his third year in college. A lot of places he'd be a redshirt sophomore. Here he's a true junior. He's going. So, but really good work ethic, um, athletic, strong, powerful. He's what you want in three technique. He could do it all. He could be a first and second down run stop guy. He's a third down. He's an every down guy. And what we've seen out of him now is just better work ethic, better leadership, a guy that's maturing, a guy that's growing. And I just saw him right now on the way out. We're going to throw the, the kitchen sink at him. We are. We're going to line up and just go and go, go, go and test him. And I think everybody feels that way right now. There's no, uh, you know, I know Tom Brady said a lot, There's no, there are no sacred cows. You know? We're throwing it at everybody because we have to develop a resiliency and a mentality to, to make sure we take on this challenging season the right way. A couple of guys have been absent, uh, JJ, Mikhail, uh, Lance, Will Hoyt. Just what's the status of those? Uh, some guys are unavailable, you know, and some guys as they're made available. You mentioned the other day some of the freshman receivers look like veterans already, but you wanted to pump the brakes a little bit on that. Yeah. Are you looking forward to seeing how they handle the more physical practices they down the doubt. road? Yeah. Well, you know you want to see you want to see a guy get nicked up and then show up the next day full throttle if uh, you you want to see if a guy when a guy's injured come on there's no we don't play without a guy right away he's taken into the training room and cared for but when when football soreness sets in you want to see guys fight through you want to see guys with the mentality to go out there and practice just as hard if they're looking for an extra band-aid or an extra name it a way to soften the hardness that comes with the camp, we have to help those guys get through that. And it's taught, and it's repped. I don't, we don't believe there is any point in yelling, get tougher, get, you have to practice it. And these guys want to do it well, and they've really, just in a short amount of time, you see a team that's really working on physicality and mentality, and the standard is so high for us that it'll probably be almost unreachable every year, and that's okay. We want to keep just reaching for that, striving for that. Let's take it as far as we can go. When you guys brought Tim on uh, on the staff, there was this discussion of how well he does at de um, developing linebackers. Have you started to maybe see, I know it's really early, but have you started to maybe see some different things out of this linebacker group that shows there might be an additional gear for them to reach this year? I think his system in general does. His system just ties the back end of the front seven very well, which is something that we really, really needed. His linebackers have been very productive. Our linebackers here have been really productive. Coach Wilson does a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job with those guys. Um, but the combination of those guys, Coach Salovea working, you know, we have some additional hires as well that bring a lot of knowledge to the table for off-season and in-season regimentation, technique and fundamental work that we feel we have a really just a very powerful, a very dynamic staff that can develop guys. So, And they're getting every bit of what we have. So, But Tim uh, Tim has done a great job. I know Justin Flo has talked a lot about just how ready he is for this year after having to miss out on most of last season. Are, are you kind of seeing a bit of the motor here early out of him? Oh, he's always had a motor. And again, today he made two two really big explosive plays, you know, game-changing tackles for losses. Um, and the best thing that we can do for Justin is to bring our very best right at him every single day because it's been a little while since he's played football. He's doing a really good job learning everything and learning it fast. Uh, he really, tremendous attitude, great effort. Um, you know, we, we feel that our linebacker room is just getting better and better and better, and he's a big reason why as well. Is there anything you've seen out of Bridges making that jump to corner that you think he's done particularly well? Yeah, he does. I mean, he's just changed his body, number one, his ability to redirect and move. I think when he first came in, we thought he was more of a safety. 
type. And then one day we put him up to the line of scrimmage to press some guys, and he could press, flip his hips, and run. And all of a sudden he's running almost 22 miles per hour in the offseason, and his short area of quickness, his balance and body control has just been getting better and better. Transitions really well. I just, he's just, uh, he's constantly just improving himself. He is a football junkie. He's a film junkie. He's addicted to improvement. A tremendous human being, well liked by his teammates, and he's a really hard worker. It's a good combination when you're 6'3 and 195 pounds. So all those things combined have really led to great spring, a great camp so far the first four days. That's Triquez Bridges that he was talking about there, and we're going to hear from that Oregon defensive back coming up in just a little while. That's Mario Cristobal, the Oregon football head coach, met with the media after practice today. Oregon, a little shorter practice tomorrow in full pads on Thursday. And, you know, I always anticipate when, when the Ducks are in full pads. That's when I think uh, – Everybody gets up for it. You know, there's always a lot of energy first day in full pads. When we come back and hear from a couple defensive players, we've got Brandon Dorless, Triquez Bridges, Verone McKinley, Bennett Williams, Justin Flo, all met with the media today. We'll get to as many as, of them as we can after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear Exit Strategy, no matter which Toyota you choose, there's an exit from the ordinary to match. See you soon, Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com today. Toyota. Let's go places. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Exit Strategy, no matter which Toyota you choose, there's an exit from the ordinary to match. See you soon. Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer or Toyota.com today. Toyota. Let's go places. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s, like go back to college, learn to skateboard. Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. At aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a free three-minute chat with the friendly digital retirement coach, Avo, and receive personalized tips to help boost your savings. Start chatting with Avo today at aceyourretirement.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, President of On Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. After practice today, the defensive side of the ball met with the media in addition to Coach Cristobal, and we've got a slew of interviews for you. Won't get to all of them today. We'll save some of them for tomorrow. We will also talk to the offensive side of the ball. I'm planning on sitting down with Ryan Walk and George Moore, talking with a couple of veterans of the offensive line that I haven't gotten a chance to talk to yet in this iteration of fall camp anyway. I'm looking forward to doing that. Brandon Dorless, uh, I think he is poised to have a huge, huge season Seems like he kind of took that veteran step forward maybe last year, but definitely heading into this year. Has that commanding presence on the defensive line. And he's playing a spot that was occupied by, well, a, a few different great ducks over the last few years. And he's very versatile along that defensive line, too. We talked with him about that as myself and a few other members of the media talked with Brandon Dorless today. How much did you get out of this just playing through everything you guys went through and getting a lot of snaps during that season? Last year, you know, it was it was a good uh good uh opportunity for me to learn, you know, every position on the D line. Being behind Austin and uh for a fat net, you know, I, I got to admit from nose, three tech, four five, somebody five, you know. It was good to learn from those guys, you know, just just like know what to what to do and to be successful. With those two graduating, do you, do you change your role? Are you I mean you got a lot of young guys behind you, are you more of a vocal leader type guy or are you just a lead by example guy? You know, I, 
the type of leader I am, you know, I like to lead by example. You know, Coach Coach Joe and Coach Cristobal always forcing me and lead me, uh, try to push me to be more vocal to the guys, you know, try to be more hands-on, teach them more stuff, so yeah. I heard a couple of the offensive linemen today complaining that you were anticipating plays. Like, do you feel like a veteran at this point in terms of understanding what your role, but also what's coming at you. I mean, is that just a sign of kind of your experience level? And I mean, yeah. But with the addition of Coach Brumbard and Coach Winston, you know, they pushed me to actually watch my film and actually know, like, before the snap to, to know what to expect. So now, like, I go out there pre-snap. I try to find, know, like, call out the runs, left or right, the pullers and stuff. So, yeah. What, what's the energy like in the D-line room? I, I saw you tweeting about the trenches yesterday. Yeah, the energy is great every day. You know, we come to compete. We never satisfy with anything. You know, we try, try and get better every day. What was the biggest thing you took away from the spring? Spring? Just to be more consistent, you know. I was struggling a little bit with my weight. So being consistent, like, off the field with my nutrition, yeah. You, with Coach DeRuiter now, what, what have you noticed about the way he operates the defense? Uh, Coach DeRuiter, he likes to mix it up, you know. Position swap and everything, you know. play, Have guys go inside, have guys go outside, you know. I could play two wide, I could play the five, so yeah. He talks, he talks a lot about job swapping. I mean, it, how valuable is that just to have that versatility for all of you guys? You no, know, it's great because you know it's the offense going to keep on keep on on their toes. You know they don't know what to expect. Like they'll see a two eye two eye guy lined up in the five. They they, they all messed up. So you know it, it's it's good to be uh, have them on their toes and change it up every day. Going back to what you said about the nutrition stuff, is, it, is there a meal or a food that was like particularly helpful for you with that? I mean, you know, growing up, you know, I, I'm, I'm Haitian, so my mom, she was over here, like, during the spring, so she was making a lot of Haitian food, so I was able to get to get some good food and good nutrition and to get my weight up. Did yes, you sir. Play basketball at all? Oh, yeah, you know I do, man. That's, I, that was always always a love of me, you know. I still get, I still go to the rec, you know, get some, some buckets up. Robbie was a two-sport athlete, you know. Yeah, any, yeah. any uh, you want to talk to Coach Altman at all about that? Uh... Man, you know, I just, I'm right now focused on football, you know, yeah. What's your game like? What kind of basketball player are you? Oh, you know, I played a three. I played a small four, shooting goal. I could shoot the ball, yeah. Mario was saying, I think that's why they're asking, is like when you first got here, you were more of a basketball player, trying to play football, yeah. and now you're a football player. Yes, sir. When did that light go on? Because he said you had a, a really good Rose Bowl. Like, when did you realize you could be really good at, at this Like level? you said, the Rose Bowl game, you know, I, I got in a lot. You know, I was able to go against one of the best centers mm -hmm. my, my freshman year. So that was a great opportunity. And going against him and doing what I did in the Rose Bowl, it really gave me that light. We're like, yeah, this, this is for you, and this is what you're going to do for the future. When you have, you know, a top five NFL guy on the edge, Kayvon, what does that do for the rest of the defensive linemen inside? It helps us a, a lot because they focus on him. Well, it takes them all off on us. We, could, we go inside, work our games, work what we got to do, you know. The tackle kicks out far. So that gives me, at the three set, it gives me a, like a wide, wide range to work with the guard, and I can work any moves I want. Yeah. Yeah, like you and Popo, I guess, most downs, if you only have to beat your guy, I, I'd imagine that gives you guys a lot of confidence. Yes, sir, it does. It does. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. I think Brandon Dorless is poised for a huge, huge season. That was part of why I wanted to talk with him uh, for the show today. It was just very apparent to me that along that defensive line with guys like Jordan Scott and Austin Fallu now moving on in their careers that, you know, Keon Ware Hudson, Brandon Dorless, those guys are going to be stepping up. And Keon Ware Hudson's a guy that we're probably going to be talking to on Thursday this week just to get a sense of what that D-line looks like. guy like Christian Williams that came in as part of that group, this is kind of the new wave of Oregon defensive linemen. I think Brandon Dorless is going to have a really, really good season. Uh, he just he seems to fit the mold, doesn't he? Saying all the right things. I am really looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table for the Ducks. When we come back, a guy that Mario Cristobal was asked about today, Tranquil's Bridges, met with the media. We're going to talk with him after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As my family continued to grow, I realized I'd have to replace my beloved Jeep with something that has, well, more seats. I'm Jason Hines, country financial rep and father of seven. Whether you're upgrading from your sporty ride with no room for a car seat or finally replacing your well-loved beater that still has a cassette player, you'll want the right protection for your new car. Work with a country financial rep like me and get the protection you need at a price you can afford. Learn more at takesimplesteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. This is Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. 
Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting a Teenager Learning the Lingo. GOAT, G O A T, acronym, stands for greatest of all time. As in spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave. Dad, you're the GOAT. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit adoptuskids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Back on Nugget Cider, President Bond Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack with you inside the Country Financial Studio. A number of defensive players met with the media today as Oregon gets ready for the first day in full pads on Thursday and then anticipating a scrimmage inside Autzen Stadium on Saturday. More details to come on that. Tricorce Bridgers is a guy who I think is going to play a lot this year, and a guy who's been very versatile. Came in as a safety, made the transition to cornerback. Mario Cristobal said the biggest thing that he had to do was change his body. He's done that. Now it looks like he's starting to play that position with a little more confidence. And, well, Bridges met with the media today to talk a little bit about camp so far. You know, what's that transition to corner be, feel like? And, you know, you feeling more comfortable? Uh, well, first off, uh, safety was very easy for me. Um, going to corner, I had to learn how to, like, just play a lot of techniques and stuff like that for my big body. It was a, it was a big transformation for me. So uh, just, like, just working on my technique, like, still learning my body and stuff like that, it was a big thing going to corner. But now corner is like a... a a, a easy thing for me now, so I just like learn the plays and you know just dial into all that stuff. It's just easy now. How much of that skill set from when that still transfers? Because you, I mean, you led the state in interceptions. So right. How much See, of that still transfers? What you're looking to do now? Uh, say it again. Just how much of what you did in high school as a defensive back as a safety transfers to what you're doing now? Um, well, it was just like more of like I, in high school I was playing more of a talent. And um, so now it's like just more of technique and stuff like that. So it's just it's a it's a big difference and a big transformation. What's what would for you? I guess with some of the guys out right now, I mean, you had that a little bit in the spring. But does that change anything you've done in practice? And what's it been like working with ones and twos? Um, working with the ones and twos, uh, it's, I feel a lot comfortable. You know, uh, I play with more confidence because like everybody's just like on the same page. It's like everybody it's. The, I'm with the ones, and the ones they they more they know what they're doing more, so like it's just like better communication and stuff like that. But I mean, it's it's nothing. It's not a big change, but it's just like I feel more comfortable with uh ones and stuff like that. When you got here and you were a safety, you know you're comfortable with that position. Mm-hmm. Did you think corner was ever going to be a place you'd play, or how did that come about? Um yes, when I was getting recruited, I was like um, told that you no, know, once I come here, if I come here, um that they, they'll try me at corner because of my my range and stuff like that and. Just like with the range that I have, it uh, put me in position to go in the league. How much had you done at corner, like at camps and stuff before getting here? Like, had you spent time training that at all, really? At, at corner, no. Um, but the crazy thing was, um, like, when I go to camps and stuff like that, they'll, um, when you do, like, one-on-ones, I always have to, like, press up and play, like, as a corner. So I just trained my body to just, like, so try to little, do it. Yeah, I had, I had a little experience, but I, had, I didn't have too much experience at corner. Yeah, and you guys have a, a lot of really talented receivers. You know, obviously Dante and Troy and the freshmen are getting a lot of chatter, oh, but yeah. the room as a whole is just stacked now. How has that helped you guys improve as a, as a secondary? Well, first off, uh, those boys, they are, they're, they're good. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't look like freshmen, you know, because, like, they've been working. Uh, we push each other. But those guys, they are ready. They, you know, they doing the right thing. They help. They push me to be better because this is just, you know, just the right thing to do as a teammate. A lot, I think a lot of the corners come from different parts of the country. Does that help? Say it again? A lot of the corners come from different parts of the country. Does yeah. that help? Because I mean, on the team, you probably don't have many guys from the south, but a lot of them are corners. Right. But, like, just with that, it's just, we see it as one. Like, we're a big family. Our room is strong. We, we um, scripting our buns and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool just to have people from different um, states and stuff like that because you just you, you, you pick up their carrots and you just, like, you know, you, you bring in something from them. So, that's pretty cool, too. It seems to me like body type-wise, you have a lot of different versatility. 
you're, they're a tall, lean guy. Some of the guys are tall, lean. Mike Kale's a little smaller. Uh, Does that help you think in terms of just projecting to how you face offenses? Um, yeah, it, my my length, um, I'm able to play a, a little different than others because like some guys have to press up a little more, uh, a little bit more. I can give myself space because I have like a like a seven two wingspan. So. I mean, that long? Yeah. It's a foot taller than you are. Hey, it's long, pretty long. Seven foot two wingspan. I mean, yeah, that's amazing, though. That's, I think that was Eric Scoble, our buddy from 24 7 Sports, that asked that. Like, that's like a foot taller than than Tricolor's Bridges is. I mean, seven foot two wingspan. I mean, so that that's, though, the, the what, what I think is kind of cool about. You heard him discussing, like, when he got recruited at Oregon. You know, he would played safety. He was comfortable there. But the coaches looked at him, and they were like, hey, you know, we we think that you might be pretty good at corner. Like, you've got the length that might help you get to the next level. And now he, he's doing it. I mean, that, that that's what's cool when, when you hear some of those stories about how Mario Cristobal and his staff are just so upfront about those sorts of things early on in the recruiting process. I think a guy like Triquez Bridges, he's like, yeah, you know what? That might help me at the next level. That's going to help me get to where I want to be. Those are the cool stories. Those, to me, are the the, the stories that, that that really show you that recruiting isn't just get the guy here on campus. It's, well, no, you got you got to say the right things once they're here and be honest with them, and that's what Coach Cristobal and his staff has done. And, and look, it's not just me sitting here in this chair saying that. It's look at the re- recruiting rankings and look at the success on the field. That's what the Ducks have been able to do. All right, we won't have enough time today to get to Verone McKinley, Bennett Williams, Justin Flo. Those interviews, we've got them ready for you tomorrow on Duck Insider. We're going to kick off Duck Insider tomorrow with Matt Ulmer. The Oregon Volleyball head coach is going to join us, and we will also uh, have Rob Mosley, the editor-in-chief of GoDucks.com. We'll basically do the, the, the quack 10 minutes with with Rob. That's essentially what we, what we do every Wednesday. Uh, we're actually getting ready. I'm, I'm getting ready to press tweet on the Quack Minute from the football account as we finish the show up here right before 2 o'clock. Uh, the Ducks uh, ranked 12th in the first preseason coaches poll. Third straight season under head coach Mario Cristobal. The, the Ducks open in the top 15. The Ducks are the highest ranked team in the Pac-12. USC is a couple spots behind them at 14. Washington's number 21. Utah ASU, UCLA, Stanford, and Cal all received votes. And again, congratulations today to Jody Berry. Promoted to associate head coach for Kelly Graves and the women's basketball team. She's just awesome. I don't have anything else to say. We'll see you tomorrow on Duck Insider. You're not too cool for me. And in return, I reciprocate that sentiment. I'll never be too cool for you. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree, and you can't take that from me. Please let it be noted that I told my job they can dock my pay. Right now, it's just too important to take you to school every day. I want to be legendary for you. I want you to puff out your chest when you go to school the same way I do. I walk taller because of you, because I found everything to live for. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too. Love has no labels, and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and experiences connect through conversation, and it feels good. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together. Start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Look out, world, we're getting strong. The future's here and we belong. She can sell, she can do more. Like build a rocket and watch it soar. Or clean the oceans and make the world a better place. Oh, so can you. Find a cure, invent something new. There's no challenge in the world that she can't face. She can stem. Learn more at She Can Stem. A message brought to you by the Ad Council.
You've been listening to Doc Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Oregon Sports Network.